seconds away on Studio 5. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know, I'm looking around my life and all I have is Jesus. Always only Jesus. Carl Lentz pastors some of the biggest names in the entertainment world. You're a pastor to the faithless as well as the famous, including Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez. Are you going to be officiating that wedding? Get his answer to that question and see how he wants to help you own the moment. Plus, it's an amazing song. See what inspiring new films are coming to the box office in 2018 and what finished on top in 2017. Also ahead. Bear. That famous bear from the storybooks comes to life in Paddington 2. All in Studio 5, starting now. And welcome to Studio 5 and the new year, 2018, the year to own the moment. We're sitting down with Hillsong New York Pastor Carl Lentz in just a bit. But first, let's begin as we do every week, counting down the best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment news. At number 5. Carl leaves in 20 seconds. The 2017 box office was favorable for faith-based films, with movies like The Shack earning more than $57 million. Where's Missy? Missy! Where's Missy? Sorry, Mac, they haven't seen her. Missy! Missy! Who's scared? I didn't know what to do. I expected a left turn two deserts ago. Sony's animated Christmas story, The Star, pulled in more than 40 million. Where do you go to play an animated mother of Jesus? Where do you research? There you go. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, where do you research? Rounding out this Studio 5 Top 5, The Case for Christ with more than 14 million. Kevin Sorbo's Let There Be Light with a little more than seven. And the same kind of different as me with a little more than six million. I had another dream last night. Was it a good one or was it about me? It was about a poor wise man who changes the city. And I saw his face. At number four, we look ahead at 2018. St. James Church has become a beacon of violence and controversy. And it has no place on Hadley University campus. God's Not Dead, A Light in Darkness is in theaters March 30th. And Studio 5 is on the set for the filming of this third installment of the Pure Flix franchise, breaking some big news. Is this the final act for God's Not Dead? I think it's the final act where we're at. Whether or not this, the, you know, the franchise goes on in a different way, um, I don't know, but it certainly could be the final act for Reverend Dave, that's for sure. This year will also bring I Can Only Imagine from the Irwin Brothers. It's an amazing song. It just kind of happened. It took about 10 minutes, I guess. It didn't take you 10 minutes to write this. It took a lifetime. And we'll see more of Lou Zamperini's story in 2018. Studio 5 is on set for the filming of Unbroken, Path to Redemption. With vintage cars like this pretty red Ford, the stage is set for the 1940s. A young Lou Zamperini and his wife Cynthia are coming here to the tent you see in the distance to hear from a young evangelist who has not quite made a name for himself on the national scene, evangelist Billy Graham. And those are just the first two. We're continuing the countdown throughout the rest of the show. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Hillsong New York pastor Carl Lentz pastors a church in the heart of Manhattan, but he's got a mission to reach the world. We're sitting down with him this week in Studio 5 to talk about his new book, Own the Moment, and about ministering to the faceless as well as the famous. Take a look. If you want to know today, you want to gauge your spirituality, ask yourself, how well do you love people? That's how you gauge whether God is doing something in your life. How do you love those that cannot love you back? How do you love those that slander you when you're not looking? How do you treat those people that can never do anything for you? Your book, your very first okay. book is called Own the Moment. And you begin the book by saying you are actually the person writing the book. Why? It's not so much taking credit. It's more like uh, letting people know this is, there's no spin. There's no narrative. This isn't someone, you know, trying to water down. It's, some, I, it's cool because you couldn't blame anybody. Normally, if you're in the media, anything, you can always say, 
it was edited, which probably is, or I was misquoted. But I was trying to say, I really wrote this. So if you want to take issue with me, do that. If you, you know, want to believe this, believe it. But this is my heart on paper, and it was, it's an honor to be able to, to do that. And so I took it as seriously as I could. As someone who never actually thought of himself as an author, why write this book? A lot of, a lot of what drove me to do it is everything from funerals to friends struggling to watching culture continually get a platform and a voice and going, you know what, we have one. We can add to this and it might not reach everybody, but man, it's gonna reach somebody. And I just felt like what, what a better time right now in culture when it's so confusing to try to write something that's clear. And I can do that. I can't write something that's, you know, this, I, I know what I'm good at and it's trying to get people to the, to the baseline of the gospel quickly and that's this book is is basically a little bit of a glimpse in the um, behind the curtain if you will about our church which is there's nothing back there <laughs> this is what it is it's like if you thought we we're special we're not if you think I'm special which a lot of people don't I'm not um, and I like to reaffirm that with books like moments like that chapter 5 in your book talks about turning garbage into gold what do you mean we should be the best recycling machines on earth Christians and I think we I just don't miss a beat with that like what someone else sees as garbage I'm like I will find a win in that that's what Jesus did that's what he's done with us like legitimately without the grace of God all of us garbage every good work every good thought nothing it's garbage but God you know literally cut through time and eternity to bring out the gold in us, which is Jesus. And to, you know, reflect that has got to be our goal. And so it, it, people who are watching this show and with your anointing and your spirit to invade the darkest places, I think you just need a couple people who, who get you to pray with you, to support you. And then, you know what, let, let everybody else question and talk, whatever. Like life is so short that it, I don't want to, I've already wasted too much time, you know, whether it's making bad decisions or even caring too much about other people's opinions. I just refuse to live like that. So I would say to anybody that's in this space watching this, it's for a reason. Like there's a call, go go get that thing. You know, we, we are running out of time. We need people to step up. God's looking for reasons to do ridiculous things. So you interview in the 700 Club, Good Morning America, The Breakfast Club. All of these shows have very different audiences. How are you attracting them? I mean, some some of these places love Justin, and they know if I go on the show, they can put Justin's name in the thing, which is clickbait, <laughs> which is smart marketing for them. For us, I don't care what the reason is, like we're gonna go find a way to talk about the gospel. So um, some are legitimately interested in why people come to church in New York, and then some are like, eh, we don't really care, we wanna be able to use you know, a celebrity tie-in. and. But um, I'm cool with whatever, you know, because I know we got one message, we got one song on this radio station, and we will play that thing until God says different. So I think people are interested in why, why God is moving in New York, and we're a part of that. So what's the difference in you preaching to and discipling such celebrities? Yeah, I think with famous people, I know I understand the intrigue, because if, if I was in, on the other, other seat, I would ask those questions, and I always tell people, the beauty of the gospel is that we all have different like symptoms, but our, our sickness is the same, which is a, a need for Jesus. So Justin is super famous, but he still deals with the same stuff you and I deal with. It's different because of his platform, but that's why I wrote this book is to let people know, like, I don't care where you are, what you do, you desperately need Jesus. So that's one thing I've learned from the faceless to the famous. The gospel is so good that it is no respecter of platform, so social status, money, and that's why I always feel so confident in it. So if you're the president of the United States, we're gonna preach the same way. If you are the president of your little cubicle box cardboard that you live in, in, in you know, Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, you still get the same right to hear the gospel. And that's what I love about it. And stay tuned as we continue our conversation with Hillsong New York Pastor Carl Lentz in just a bit. You don't want to miss it. And welcome back to Studio 5. Time now for the next headline in our countdown of the best in the world of uplifting entertainment news. At number three. Have you ever seen the 
best wishes to Taya Smith. The Hillsong United singer shared on Instagram, she's engaged. In the So This Happened post, Taya wrote, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside us, helping us along. I see the world in light. I see the world in wonder. Taya's post prompted many well wishes from fans, including Justin Bieber, who wrote, congrats, hope it's not too soon. At number two. Hey everybody. I'm Stephen Baldwin. Gosh, I look fantastic. Stephen Baldwin is on the road in his RV on a pilgrimage to sit down with everyday Americans. What's America to you? Our ancestors suffered the most. To hopefully start to bridge the gap. This is the Great American Pilgrimage. What do you think has been the most profound lesson you've learned on the journey? At my age, trying to go to eight cities in four weeks uh, and then produce 16 episodes of a docuseries <clears throat> Don't try this at home. That's lesson number one. <laughs> the series is airing now on the RT Network. Well, I certainly think that we have to do something to know who's coming in the country out. I don't have a problem with that, but what I'm having a problem See? with... See, we're similar, and we didn't even know it. And with that, there is only one more headline remaining in the countdown. Time now to continue our conversation with Pastor Carl Lentz, who's got a special message for the Evangelical Church. So it's not a sin in your church to have an abortion? Um, that's the kind of conversation we would have finding out your story, where you're from, what Work you believe. Work through it. Like yeah, about I mean, God's the judge. People have to live to their own convictions. And mm -hmm. I think if I have to tell you, mm -hmm. um, that's, such a, that's such a broad question to me. I'm going, I'm going higher. I want to sit with somebody and say, where do you believe? Um, so it's I, not an open and shut case with you? Some people would say it is. I, I think to me, I'm trying to teach people who Jesus is first, mm -hmm. find out their story. Before I start picking and choosing what I think is sin in your life, mm -hmm. I'd like to know your name. Now we have to talk about your appearance on The View. You talked about abortion and I certainly heard what you were saying, but I'd like to give you an opportunity to clarify for those who didn't get it. What was the message you were trying to say there? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it was pretty simple. Like the first thing I'm, I'm doing, I don't care if it's a TV show or you know a conversation on the street, like the woman who asked me the question is not a Christian. So the logical move, no matter what, is to ask somebody who God is. Because for me to talk about sin without establishing what sin is and then who establishes what sin is, to me, this is nonsensical. So to give an answer that this woman wanted because she's pro-choice, pro, -choice, pro everything probably I'm against um, by not giving her what she wanted. It actually took some of the directional control from her in that moment. And I felt like it at all times, what was funny to me about that is that I got to talk about Jesus and it wasn't good enough for some people claiming to follow him. So for me, I'm okay with, uh, you know, I, I also have women in that audience and on the streets of New York that I'm more passionate about than pleasing people who, you know, say they're Christians and took issue with what I said, that's their right to take issue. It's my issue. To, it's my right to keep on being in positions to say what we feel is best. And, and for those who were genuinely confused by that, did my best to clarify it. But you can't really try to lead people if you're going to think about opinion first. Our thing is going to be gospel first. What does God call us to do right now? And we're also under no obligation to say anything. And people forget that. Like, you should have done this. You should have said that. I say, who are you? You know, I think our goal is to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. And um, I will have opportunities, you know, in the future. And who knows the way we'll handle it. But that's why that particular moment went down like that is because I knew I wouldn't have time and context to really be different than everybody else up there talking about sin. A lot of people watching don't know what sin is because they don't know who God is. So for me, it was a really logical thing to say, yeah, right now we're going to go this way because I don't, I don't, I'm not under any obligation to be a puppet up here. And, you know, you got to live with a very small amount of people who didn't get it. Most people did. The issue of race seems to, at least right now, always be in the forefront of our culture and discussion. I know you're friends with uh, Lecrae, and he has made it a point to distance himself from the evangelical community. What do you think of that move? I feel like I love Lecrae and I stand with him. I think white evangelical, like evangelical and the word white 
to me, the, the combo has made me never want to be associated with the word evangelical. And I don't think that's fair, but at the same time, I, I want to be a part of the generation that redefines what that means. Because right now, when people think evangelical, they're not thinking Bible-believing Christian. They're thinking pro this, right, red state, this belief, this political view, and I can't stand it. And I understand why a guy like Lecrae would go, no way. No, and I think it's cool that he has gained, you know, more influence. And in the short term, he was willing to say, I'm not doing this. Like, I don't care if you don't want to come to my shows. I don't care if you're not going to buy my music. This is who I've always been. And if you don't want to share my pain, then I don't want to share my music with you anyway. And I'm with that. Like, I, I feel the same way. There are some people who I don't want to resonate with this message. There are some people I do want to go, Carl, we can't stand you. Good. Because if we agree on stuff, something's wrong with me. And I think that's where Lecrae was at. Like, hey, if you don't, if you can't understand what I'm, what I'm going through right now as a black man in America, you don't understand me anyway. So I, I don't think he separated from, you know, evangelical gospel Jesus as much as he did a sector of it that just to me is needs a change so bad. And Carl Lentz's book, Own the Moment, is available right now wherever books are sold. Be sure to check it out. Still ahead on Studio 5. You sent me to London to find a home. I have a wonderful family. It's the first children's film of 2018. So it's a book. It has to be a bundle of laughs. Of course it does. We're taking you behind the scenes with the cast of Paddington 2. And welcome back to Studio 5. Time now for the number one headline in this week's countdown of the best in the world of uplifting entertainment news. At number one. I met a wise man who changed my life. Bono graces the year's first cover of Rolling Stone magazine, opening up about his near-death experience, his fear, and his faith. The U2 frontman talks about Paul's biblical writing on love, saying, I'm looking to somebody like Paul who was in prison and writing these love letters and thinking, how does that happen? It's amazing. Do you pray? Yes. To whom or what do you pray? To and Christ. Way? To Christ. Yeah. And, and what do you pray for? I pray to get to know um, <laughs> the will of God, because then the prayers have more chance of coming true. That wraps this week's countdown and brings us to the first children's movie of 2018, Paddington 2. It brings the beloved teddy bear back to life, and Studio 5 is taking you behind the scenes. Aunt Lucy! Paddington! Oh. Come with me, Aunt Lucy. Oh, yes, please. I want to see everything. Paddington is always uh, the, the, the most stable character in the film, really, because he, he never changes insofar as if ever mishap befalls him. He doesn't necessarily learn from it, but he just resets to positive all the time and everything is going to be all right. This is perfect. Dear Aunt Lucy, you sent me to London to find a home. I have a wonderful family. I think you're in great shape for a man your age, Mr. Brown. Ah, thank you, Paddington. Hang on, how old do you think I am? When he sets his heart on getting a present for Aunt Lucy and he needs to earn some pennies to, to, do, you know, to, to get the, enough money to buy it, he sets out to do lots of odd jobs around the area and of course this you know, brings him into, into contact with all sorts of people who live in, in this very, as you say, multicultural community in, um, uh, around Windsor Gardens. I am tickled the deepest shade of shrimp to have been asked here tonight to open this wonderful old steam fair. My character, Phoenix Buchanan, is an ex-star of the West End Theatre. Uh, I say ex because his career has taken a downturn. So, I'm going to ask one of you to come up here and open the fair. Volunteers! Anyone? Anyway. It's um, knowingly and self-avowedly positive, not just about London, but about human beings, about the power of being uh, decent and well-mannered in the way that Aunt Lucy taught Paddington to be. Excuse me, Mr. Knuckles? Yes? I just wondered if I could have a quick word about the food. Send a medic to the canteen. We want to complain. 
Knuckles McGinty is a, a pretty interesting kind of a character to take on, and uh, he's a lot of fun, Knuckles, I have to say. Um, he's kind of got one of those hearts of gold locked away in a quite mad exterior, really. <laughs> looks for the good in all of us and somehow he finds it. If we're kind and polite, the world will be right. It's really, really sort of enjoyable. I got a great kick out of it. The more eccentric, the better. It was like eccentricity welcome. You just know when you walk through the door. So it's a book. it has to be a bundle of laughs. Of course it does. Paddington 2 is in American theaters beginning January 12th. Still to come, here on Studio 5. You know you're maximizing the moments when the stuff you used to run from, you run to. The author of Own the Moment, Pastor Carl Lentz, has a final word to help you do just that. And welcome back to Studio 5. We are just about out of time for this week's episode, so let's look ahead right now to what we're working on for next week. These are images from the powerful new war drama starring Chris Hemsworth. I don't care how long you're gone, as long as you come back. We got one, two, three, four! Every step we take is going to be on a minefield from a hundred different wars. Odds are we're not all going to make it out of this one. If we don't take that city, World Trade Center is just the beginning. 12 Strong is the declassified true story of the first American soldiers sent into Afghanistan after 9-11. And Studio 5 has your first look. The most important thing a man can take into combat is a reason why. Be in this fight, boys, you mark my words. And that's a very special edition of Studio 5 you want to be sure to watch. Right now, I'm giving the final word to the gentleman who started it all for us this week, Carl Lentz. I remember vividly going to prisons with my father. He'd have a guitar and his Bible, and we would leave every time. He would say, son, no, don't forget these men. They matter. Like, our world's going to try to tell you they don't matter, but they do. You know, and that's what we do. The gospel should be preached in prisons. And I grew up thinking everybody was like that. Like, I grew up thinking everybody was, you know, available to hear the gospel. Only later in Christendom do you find out we're supposed to second guess some people because they're gay or because they're this or they're hateful or whatever it might be. Or, you know, it, it, it just was a revelation to me that if you can stay true to the gospel, which is the whosoever's at all times, God will use your life. That's an awesome final word for this edition of Studio 5. Hope you'll join me right here again next week. In the meantime, be sure to stay up to date with us here in Studio 5 on our Facebook page at Studio 5 TV. And also check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless.